Today we're taking a look at the new cabinet software that was added in the latest Helix 3.50 update, uh, and specifically the three parameters of mic placement that have been uh, included in there. Of course, we've always had the distance parameter that's been there since the beginning of the Helix, but now they've added mic placement, which is specifically where the mic is relative to the speaker. Is it on the dust cap, the edge of the dust cap where it meets the cone? Is it somewhere in the speaker cone or maybe all the way on the edge of the cone? And then lastly, the third axis we're gonna talk about is the actual angle of the microphone. Is it directly on zero degrees or 45 degrees? Those are the two choices we have to work with within the Helix. By the end of this video, it's my hope that you'll go home with a slightly better understanding of how these three parameters specifically affect the tone of a recorded guitar amp. And we're gonna look at each of these three parameters within three different contexts. So the first one, I had actually filmed a video earlier this year, I called it Guitar Amp Miking 101. You can check it out if you want more info, uh, maybe after this video. And I actually went through all these tests with a real mic and a real amplifier. Uh, I recorded a sample, reamped it through it, and then just moved the mic so we can listen to these three axes, I called it, and how each of these axes directly affects the guitar tone. So we're gonna look at each of the three parameters within that context with a real amp and a real microphone. Of course, second way, we're gonna to listen to it through the Helix software with digital amp modeling and the new cabinet software, which is IR based. Uh, and then third, we're gonna actually feed pink noise through the cabinet simulation, bypassing the amp, uh, specifically so that we can look at a frequency chart. It's a EQ plugin basically, and visually and look at how microphone placement affects different parts of the entire frequency spectrum. The first thing we're gonna do before we even start looking at HX edit and the EQ graphs, I just wanna make sure you're listening with your ears and not your eyes. So we're gonna start by listening to the samples that I recorded not too long ago with that Mesa Boogie and an SM7B. Just cut up, place back to back, and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're hearing. As we move here, I just wanted to reiterate that every guitar amp, every guitar tone, every microphone you use is gonna react differently here. So this video might be a great place to start for kind of loosely understanding these parameters, but the more you do this on your own, you can work in Helix. I always say the Helix is an amazing learning tool on top of just being an incredible piece of equipment. The more you work at this stuff on your own, the more you're gonna understand how microphone placement really affects something like this. It should also go without saying that if you wanna really make the most of this demo, you should be using either you know decent studio monitors or headphones. Your laptop or phone speaker might not cut it. Next up, we're gonna use a preset that I had built not long ago, um, and I've got it down on custom tone if you wanna try it out, by the way. So this is a preset built using a lot of the new software that we were given in the, the latest updates. So like the new Tube Screamer and the PV Patrol model, the new Ambience. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've sacrificed some modulation blocks at the beginning and I've, I'm using my Stomp XL by the way. I'm going to set up a loop just to play back and I'm going to change some parameters here in the cab block. <laughs> All right, so we've got the loop going. Now I'm gonna start messing around with the cabinet parameters. So this, these are the settings that I've dialed in that I like the sound of. Uh, and of course I've remembered to turn off the low cut and the high cut so that's not affecting it too much. I'm gonna boost the level a little bit, I think. Um, let's start with messing around with the position. So I'm gonna start playing with this and then I'll kind of fill you in on what I'm hearing. Thank you. 
So yeah, obviously like a very important control here. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, I built this preset from the ground up. Um, what I like to do when I dial in a preset is I'll kind of rough in the amp settings. Then I go to the cab block, make sure the cab block is set before I go back and refine the amp settings. So uh, another good thing to keep in mind is that the way a microphone sounds, the speaker is obviously very highly affected by the amp model. So a clean guitar sound is going to react very differently than this heavily overdriven one. To keep this video relatively short, I'm just kind of sticking with this one tone because uh, I think it's pretty universally uh, applicable to a lot of different styles of music. It is on the higher gain setting. So with a position here closer to minimum where the microphone is much closer to the dust cap rather than the edge of the cone, I'm hearing a very punchy tone, sometimes at the sacrifice of being a little dull, not having enough high end. What I tend to hear is as the microphone approaches where the dust cap meets the speaker cone, it adds in some of that high end, that clarity. That's my favorite position for a mic right about there or maybe a little bit further if the amp is kind of naturally bass heavy. And then as you get a little bit far away, it tends to lose a lot of important information that, that helps a guitar really cut through. So let's boost this up again and I'm just gonna play through this one more time. So a mic placement closer to the edge of the cone, you know, while something like this might be reasonable for a lot of sounds, the further you get out, the easier it is going to be to get buried in the in the mix. So I don't know if I'd recommend going this far for, for anything, maybe a clean jazz guitar sound that would have a good use for it out there, kind of helps trim some of the low end. Um, so let's place this back at 2.6, which is where... Uh, it was at the beginning of this preset, and I'm going to play a little bit with the distance parameter. The distance parameter is heavily reliant on a microphone's proximity effect, so specifically a directional microphone. Actually, this one is the exception, but pretty much all directional microphones have a low-end boost that happens the closer you get to a source. So what I'm hearing here, not to dictate your own perspective of it, but I just thought I'd share what I'm noticing, uh, is as we move closer to the amp, we're getting somewhere in the range of like 100 to maybe 300 hertz. Uh, we're getting a big increase the closer we are to the amp. Um, sounds nice, nice and punchy, nice and full. The further we get it back, it sounds a little bit more um, what you would expect an amp in the room to sound like to me. Of course... We're probably, you know, these are all impulse response based. So chances are the room was really well tuned, but you might be hearing a little bit of the room sound in there. And so getting a little bit further from the amp, although typically when you see a guitar amp mic, it's usually pretty close in this situation where you're not worrying about bleed, obviously, because it's a, a digital modeler, you know, experiment with getting the mic further from the, the cabinet and see if you like that sound. So let's return this to where it was, I think three inches, and I'm going to play with the angle parameter now. So again, this one's kind of subtle. Uh, with this sound in particular, but I think in general this effect is is pretty subtle. Uh, it kind of attenuates like the high mid range. So uh, direct on. This is, as I've been saying, this these settings are basically like my go-to when I mic a live guitar amp. 
The mic is directly on axis. It's a few inches back from the grill, not too close, not too far. And then the position about where the dust cap meets the speaker cone. So as we rotate the microphone, I hear some trimming in the upper mids, maybe around like 1K or so. Let's listen to this one more time. I tend to think it sounds just a little bit more clear with the mic directly on, but if you're working with an amp that is too present, if for some reason we wanted to boost the presence control maybe, or we wanted to turn up the treble, compensating with this would be a great way to counteract that. Now we're going to jump over to Logic. I'm in Helix Native, and we're going to use the uh, the one by twelve Cali extension cabinet because it's similar to that Mesa Boogie over there. And I'm using the four fourteen microphone model um, for a few reasons. The main one being that it, it's a microphone. It is really bright, but it doesn't have any limitations that some of the other models do. So it's able to capture the full frequency. And what we're looking for is the change in frequency, not necessarily exactly where these numbers are. So let's start by moving the position back and forth. You can see obviously a lot of the extreme high end has been shaved off. It's important that I also don't have any low cut or high cut. So let's do that again. Let's sweep that from the center of the dust cap all the way to the edge. And by the way, did you know that I didn't realize this at first, but you can actually click on the microphone model and move it around. You can't do anything with the, the angle of it, but you can actually click and drag on this icon to move those parameters. Again, so we're at the minimum distance from the cabinet, uh, and now we're just going to move the microphone. Check out the big dip happening between 1 and 2K and around 4K. It's interesting the way it affects different frequencies differently. It doesn't actually just shelve off everything in the higher area. It affects certain frequencies you can see here in this range uh, and up here as well. So I'm just going to jump back and forth. Let's leave the position kind of right here at the, uh, the point that the dust cap meets the speaker cone. That's one of my favorite positions. And now we're going to play with microphone distance, literally how far it is off the face of the amp. really see from about 150 hertz down how the distance is greatly affected. This is with all mics that have a like a cardioid pattern. The closer they are to a source, the more I call it fake low end that there is. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. And one more time I'm going to sweep from left to right. And lastly, let's just affect the angle. So let's put this maybe at two inches. And the position is still the same here where the dust cap meets the speaker cone. And I'm just going to switch back and forth. Like a lot of other moments in this video, it can be really subtle. Headphones are going to be important. Watch this upper range here. can also see something slightly different happening around 200 and 300 uh, and again I want to mention that all of this you know it's you can't really take it as this is what's going to happen in every situation it's different depending on the mic depending on the speaker that you're using and actually all these parameters you know if the distance is up here the effect of 
the position of the mic is going to react differently versus when the microphone is much closer. These are all things to keep in mind. The more you mess around with these settings, the better you're going to have an understanding of it for yourself. And that's the best advice I can give on getting to know how a microphone affects the sound of a guitar amp. If this video was helpful, do me a favor and hit the like button down below. It'll help push this video to a larger audience. Maybe consider subscribing as well. I have nearly 80 Helix tutorials that I've all put in one playlist if you want to check it out uh, at some point. If you have any questions about anything I covered in this video that I might have skimmed over too quickly, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And lastly, I wanted to say that if you're new to the Helix or even if you're not and you wanted to try out some new presets, I have two bundles of free presets on my website. Link is in the description. I also have plenty of different paid bundles. There's uh, the most popular one is the huge collection. I call it the complete preset library. A complete preset, my definition is one that's designed to be used on the HX stomp as your entire rig. So these are presets that are filled with different overdrive tones, modulation, delay, and reverb. Basically everything you would need if you just want to use the HX stomp entirely by itself. The premium amp tones are designed for, uh, if you're an HX stomp user, to be used with other external effects. And if you're on one of the larger Helix units, these are just covering compression, overdrive, and amp tones, and also some spring reverb and tremolo and stuff like that which is uh, characteristic of whatever amp I'm trying to copy. Thanks again for watching the video. Hope you dug it and I'll see you in the next one.